We met up with Mike Brady, the CEO of Grayston, at the nonprofit's headquarters a few miles away from the bakery. Grayston's team of bakers produces 35,000 pounds of brownies every day for Ben & Jerry's, as well as award-winning cookies for Whole Foods. The bakery employs 195 people. It made $15.8 million in sales in 2015 and paid close to $7 million in salaries and taxes. Our destination had a hint of gray gardens to it, but we were a long way from Long Island. This old mansion was sitting on an urban bus route in southwest Yonkers, and the place was filled with statues of the Buddha, a nod to Grayston's founder. You know what is amazing is really Bernie's vision if possible, is more relevant today than it might have been 30 years ago. Mike is talking about Bernie Glassman, a Buddhist monk who founded Grayston in 1982. Glassman's vision was born out of the same philosophy of conscious capitalism that led Ben and Jerry to create their foundation and proposes the same challenge. Can you run a business that contributes to the community while also turning a profit? Bernie's vision is a job is great, but I know in your work and a lot of people's work, it's more than just the job. And so what else can we as business leaders do to ensure people are successful on the job? And Bernie had this idea long ago. So it's, it's things like child care, housing, uh, mental health services. Uh, uh, we think about parents and, and, and parental services. We have a workforce development program. So the idea of wrapping the job with the other types of services that people need to ensure that they're effective on the job is the whole model of open hiring. Grayston offers all of the above. Attached to the mansion is an old chapel where cloistered nuns used to live. Just across the lawn, there's a set of apartments that house people with AIDS and addiction issues. Grayston offers its team members a menu of social programs, which Brady says is good for the bottom line. If they're worried about their children being sick or not, not having proper childcare, are they really present on the job? No. What can I do to ensure they're most effective so that I, as a business person, I'm getting the brownies I need out the door? And that's the real lens which I want business managers to think about being more progressive in their hiring models, is it's really actually just good business. The principles of good business are the heart and soul of Grayston. The Buddhist backdrop is simply a nod to Glassman, but Brady says the universal tenets of basic human respect, like treating people well, are a part of the fabric of this place and why he wanted to work here. I've uh, kind of had a path that people, a lot of people are following these days and then I was a 30 something and uh, had been doing startups for a period of time and was finding that unfulfilling. Learned more about the social enterprise space and just around that time I received a brownie as a gift. The brownie told the story of this amazing bakery in Yonkers that was using this employment model to change people's lives and uh, I decided to volunteer. That must be a good brownie. <laughs> it's, a, it's a powerful brownie. It's a powerful brownie, yeah. I asked Brady to explain how open hiring works. People come to the bakery, they put their name on the list. We, when we have a job available, we take the next person off the list, no questions asked. Open hiring meaning you're not looking for a reason not to hire them. Right. You're looking for a reason to hire them, and if they yeah. put their name down, you're gonna hire them. That's correct. We're only concerned with what people are gonna do in the future. We're not at all concerned with what they've done in the past. Has it ever come back to bite you in the butt? You know, no more so than any other business person when they're going through a hiring process. But lots of people make it, and that's the great beauty of open hiring. Brady believes that conscious capitalism will thrive in the future. If you're gonna spend 12 hours a day at something that you enjoy, you can, in my mind, also add on the potential purpose that you want to accomplish more broadly than making a great product or a great service. And I think that will be the future of how businesses operate. Really? Yeah. You're very optimistic. <laughs> you know, it's going to be decided by you and me and all of our friends and all the co consumers out there that are going to think about where they're buying their products from. And I do think it's going to happen. In other words, conscious capitalism needs a partner, us, the conscious consumer. That bowl holds about 850, exactly 855 pounds. This is the mixing room. This is where all the magic start. This is this is like the heart of the bakery right here. Dion Drew has worked here since 2008. He grew up in poverty without a father right here in Yonkers. His mom worked two jobs but didn't earn enough to support her children. Once I got around 14, 15, I seen that we were still struggling. So 
I just did what I felt as though was right for my family. Which is making more money. And making more money. And you saw that drug dealers in the neighborhood were making more yes, money. Since I was a child. Did. Yes, since I was a child. That's what I saw. I didn't see the people that work winning. I seen the people that were selling drugs winning. Dion started selling drugs and ended up in juvenile detention. That did not stop his downward trajectory, though. Then from there, um, I continued selling drugs. Um, I went, I've been in and out of Ahala. Um, 2004, I sold drugs to an undercover cop. By the time he was released from state prison four years later, he had three felonies and 15 misdemeanors on his rap sheet. He knew it was time to make a change. His mother was getting older. He was sick of hiding drug money in shoe boxes, but no one would hire him until Grayston did. Nine years later, Dion is the supervisor of training here. So what about the fact that nobody would hire you, but here you're an integral part of the process? Yes. And a boss. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a beautiful thing. It's just the grace of God and Grayston, you know. I, I still can't believe it sometimes. Um, I'd be doing talks and i just start crying, you know what I'm saying? From being incarcerated, um, doing four years now, yeah. supervisor, you know? Right. So what did Grayston give to you? Life, my life back that I had when I was a child that, um, that I always dreamed about. I thought I'd be playing basketball, some type of sports, but I'm legal and I'm able to take care of my baby girl legally. Brooke. Yes, yes. And how old is she? Six years old. Brooke has only seen her parents work legitimate jobs and doesn't know anything about her father's past. Everything that I've been doing in the past nine years has been beyond great. <laughs> to be honest with you, you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm a guy who dropped out in ninth grade, you know what I'm saying? In and out of prison. Now I'm a supervisor. I got three bank accounts. I got a beautiful family. I just bought a car, you know what I'm saying, legally. So everything's just been up. I'm sorry. <laughs> It's an important step yeah. you can provide for your family. Yes. And that's all anybody wants to do. Yes. And then at the, and at the same time, um, when I, like I said, when I was younger, I seen all the drug dealers winning or whatever. Yeah. If, if everybody start working, the youth gonna see everybody working, they'll follow that pattern. You know what I'm saying? The communities won't be the way they are. Because I took down, I helped take down my community. So I'm trying to uplift all the communities now. A powerful message, but is the Grayston model sustainable? The pay question is a challenge for Grayston, honestly, in that we provide a, a collection of other services beyond just the regular pay. On top of that, we're, we look forward to the day that people will leave the bakery onto other positions. So we would like them to move on to higher paying positions, which need to be available in the community of Yonkers. That's where Celia Robinson, or Cece, as she's called, may come into the equation. She's never had a rap sheet. Instead, she came here to learn the baking business. You get to create. You get to create and make new things. And I was throwing uh, maybe walnuts and chocolate, chocolate chunks with caramel. And I was just doing all everything. It was, I, I was eating a lot. <laughs> Grayston helped Cece acquire a food safety license and a science and baking certificate. She also used Grayston's child care program for both of her kids. Some of the people here were incarcerated, as you say, some of them had drug addiction problems. What is that, what is it like to work with people like this? There's an open hiring policy, which is fantastic, but for other employees, what is it like? Well, everybody had their mood swings. I, d I deal with a lot of people in their attitudes. And my thing is, I'm very jolly. And just hoping that nobody says nothing incorrect to me. And I just hope they, we all have a nice day. We all work together. It's like a big family, to tell you the truth. With a business degree from a local community college, Cece plans to leave Grayston in a couple of years and open a restaurant of her own, where perhaps she'll hire other Grayston alums. Meanwhile, Brady is looking to take the Grayston model national. My goal is to scale our impact well beyond Yonkers, inspire other business leaders to take our model of open hiring, and to implement it at their organizations. The slight difference that we're hoping to encourage is that my staff is all open hiring team members. Uh, a business can commit to one person, two people, one percent of their workforce to open their eyes to the need in the community that they can make a difference by saying, hey, let's change our hiring model and let's do something different. And so I hope that Grayston can inspire this type of inclusive hiring model to businesses across the country.